Hello everyone and welcome to this week's plugin quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be going over some conceptual stuff and talking about the theory of building plugins and sort of what steps you should take in order to start thinking about your plugin all the way to programming it and releasing it all while being efficient and not wasting any time. So I'm just going to be going over these different steps and maybe have some visuals and explaining what everything I do to think about conceptualize code and release a plugin. Before I get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel, and down in the description you can follow on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and hang out with our awesome members. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which again helps us out financially. And you get cool perks like Discord status, badges, code in advance, weekly live streams, and much more. And also in the description, check out the links to uh, the AE scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange links where I have products you can purchase or download for free to help improve your workflows. So let's just go ahead and dive straight into it. Today's tutorial, once again, from idea to implementation and working out the math of your plugin to releasing it. The first step is conceptualization. This is the stage where you are physically uh, thinking about your product that you want to create. If you want to create, say for example, a, a plugin which colorizes your uh, footage. That's quite a difficult concept, uh, but part of the conceptualization phase is thinking about what exactly you want to do uh, thinking about starting to think about methods of how you could do it, whether you need to use uh, an AI library aside, whether you need to come up with some geometric algorithms to be able to draw shapes on your plugin or whatever it needs to be. This is the stage where you might end up throwing out your idea because it is either too difficult, not possible, or you're not sure how to do it. Um, this is a lot of the time where a lot of plugins get stuck in or the next step where you're really working out the nitty gritty stuff. All too often are we familiar with scripts and extensions where within that you have access to all of the built-in stuff to After Effects. You can apply existing effects and stack those on top of each other to create a workflow. But with an actual plugin, in this case we're mostly talking about uh, After Effects or Premiere Effect plugins which change the physical pixels, uh, you are basically writing things from scratch. You're not just clicking on a layer to apply an existing box blur, an existing Gaussian blur, you are physically writing the code to manipulate those pixels into creating that effect. So it's much more hands-on, of course, when you make a plugin, and the conceptualization phase is very important uh, to make sure that you, one, know what you're doing, and two, that it is possible. And this leads us to step two, assuming that you're ready to move on or to at least give your ideas some more thought, is working out the math. This could involve writing the math on a whiteboard, uh, which is very helpful, or writing it down on pieces of paper. I typically, when working on plugins, have a fair bit written down on whiteboards uh, where I'm just working out all the details of the plugin itself. This could be, for example, uh, in this case here, I am working out the math to export and read colors from the image to create uh, basically pre-made LUTs. And Knowing how to work out the math may be something that you are new to or completely familiar with depending on what your background is, but working out the math on paper or on a whiteboard rather than just expecting that you're going to code it uh, is actually a really good way to make sure that it's working because it forces you to write it down yourself and establish it in your brain of what you're working on as well as it forces you to uh, sort of physically work out the math problem uh, for example, if you have an algorithm you've developed to create a square or a circle on your image, um, the best way to test if that works is to do it by hand rather than to first go through and just code it. So working out the math is the second stage, which again, you're going to probably spend a lot of time in depending on what you're creating. More complicated algorithms or creations will definitely uh, take out a, a lot more math work to do. Whether you're just modifying individual pixels of your image or creating layer stacks that require compositing with the built-in uh, plugin tools. Step three is optional and can go along with working out the math. If you're more comfortable with it, you can work out the project in an After Effects project. 
Although you're, say you have a whole bunch of stack of effects, whether they're blurs or color correction, although you're gonna have to code those from scratch, at least if you have a project set up, you can look at it and know uh, how it should work, what kind of setup it requires, and translate that to the language of plugins. If you know you're gonna need multiple effect worlds or multiple layers stacked on each other with different composite modes or track mats, that's something that you can do in your After Effects project and have a much better idea of how you're going to do the actual uh, raw source code math. Personally, I don't do After Effects projects uh, to build out the effects most of the time, but a lot of times if you have a client who doesn't necessarily understand plugins or that's easier for them, that's definitely the route to go. Uh, it's a good way for uh, someone who's not code uh, fluent to give you an idea of what they want to create. If they send you an After Effects project, then you can take that and translate it to the uh, plugin language, so to speak. After you've worked out all the basics, or at least the base functionality of it and the math of it, or the After Effects project of it, we now move on to the code setup and the user interface. This is where you're physically setting up your plugin files. You might copy, say, the skeleton project, or if you have, uh, your, say, your last project has all the multi-frame rendering, GPU, and other useful stuff set up, you can just copy and paste that project into a new folder, change the name to match your new project, and then start beginning uh, making sure that it builds properly and setting up the user interface to update for everything. Uh, I guess I sort of forgot to mention it, but part of the conceptualization and working out the math phase is also drawing up like a basic UI. And then at this point, that is when you want to take that UI, program all the enumerated variables in your header file, and then in your params setup, actually creating all those elements and making sure it builds and everything matches and loads properly. Uh, that's pretty much the code setup because uh, once you have all your variables and your UI done, you really just have to move on to the actual physical generation of your effect, compositing and all that, which makes us move on to step five, program your main functionality in one bits per channel first. What I mean by that is whether you're creating uh, an only an After Effects plugin or an After Effects and a Premiere plugin, you basically want to focus on one bit per channel at a time. Uh, usually I start with 32 bits because in float you get more detail and you can have more accurate testing, which once you're done, say, programming your 32 bits per channel functionality and you know it works perfectly or you know it works the way you want for this demo or version of the product, you can then translate and just basically copy and paste those functions to 8 and 16 bits per channel or if you're in Premiere, you can translate your 32 bits per channel RGB uh, set up to, you know, uh, 8 bits per channel BGRA or, eight, or 32 bits per channel YUVA. So make sure you program your main functionality once you've sort of worked out the math, once you start coding it actually, stick to 1 bits per channel at first and really just make sure you get 1 bit per channel or 1 set of uh, bits per channel working and all the functionality working because then you can easily translate that to other bits per channel by doing mostly simple things like multiplying by 255 or multiplying by 32768. Then once you've established this initial working demo, so to speak, you can test and update your code until you achieve the look you want. This may be at the point where you've already completed exactly how you want it to look, which is perfect. Do a bit of testing. Make sure you don't find any bugs with different cases. Uh, try different types of footages, different types of comp setups, all different types of things to make sure that it's worth looking the way you want. Um, if you do have sort of a demo version at this point, uh, just keep testing, loading it up, testing, updating your code, testing until it reaches the look that you want. Uh, again, you're really just working right now in one bits per channel and testing it to make sure that you achieve the look you want and it's stable. Because if you know that this, say for example, 32 bits per channel functionality is stable and is working in almost any case you've tested, you can then move on to rewriting it for the other bits per channel. And for the most part, with few exceptions, because say float pixels behave a little bit differently than integer based pixels using longs or something like that, rewrite your functions for other bits per channels because at this point, if it's working in one bits per channel, it's going to be very close, if not perfectly working in your other bits per channel. You might have a bit of clamping or other 
uh, minor things to do or working with overbrights might affect these lower bit rates, but now you're ready to rewrite it and it should work fairly smoothly because you've already spent two to three steps working on making sure that it works and looks good. Then once you've written it for your other bits per channel, whether it's just for After Effects and or Premiere, now is the basically pre-release stage where you test, 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 debug, 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 and try on Mac and Windows and as many versions of the Adobe programs as you can. Of course, there are some limitations to that now as it only supports uh, version N and N minus one, the previous version basically, but send it to other people. Sometimes your developer computer has some setup that you don't realize breaks on other computers, especially if you're dealing with things like OpenGL uh, that require shaders. Those shaders might be inherent to your computer and missing on the other people's computers and make sure you just give them a list of things you want them to test or if they're good testers, you can generally just tell them, please try and break this if you find any issues. Uh, either send me screenshots or recordings um, and for this, I usually just go to friends. I don't hire people or have a specific testing group of people, um, but testing on my own computer, uh, other computers that I have to test on, and having friends to just test it on a fresh computer or a non-developer computer is huge, especially when you're preparing it to release and you don't want to deal with issues. And finally, the last step in a sort of plugin building theory after we've worked out the math, we've coded, in all the bits per channels, we've tested it ourselves, we've sent it to other people, and maybe tested some more and had a month, sometimes more or less than that. It's time for release. That's making sure your plugin is in release form uh, in Visual Studio. This is obviously its own specific compiling setting. Uh, and you want to make sure you test with your debug and release versions because sometimes there are differences in that as well. You want to make sure all your debug and release settings match so that you don't have any inconsistencies or differences in your release and plug, uh, debug versions. And of course, there is another step to releasing things, which is preparing your promotional material and all of that. But this is really just for the plugin itself. Everything there from conceptualizing to working out the math, creating After Effects projects to uh, better explain the setup if required, setting up your basic code files and interface, programming the main functionality in a single bits per channel, making sure it works perfectly and testing that until it works the way you want, then rewriting that code for other bits per channels, which is typically a pretty easy port process uh, if you're just sticking with After Effects, then a series of testing, lots more testing, debugging, and making sure you test in different versions on Mac and Windows, and sending it to your friends and non-developer computers uh, to get like the full breadth of testing, and then finally gearing up for release and releasing your plugin. Those are generally the steps that I take from start to finish of how I create a plugin. Uh, the times of which those processes take really depends on the project. Some projects, the actual creation of the plugin is very short, but the debug time and the testing is very long or vice versa. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description. You can follow me on GitHub for coding updates as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, After Effects and Premiere plugins, UXB plugins, expressions, and hang out with our awesome members and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, link for that is in the description. You can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. This comes with cool perks like badges, weekly VIP streams, Discord status, and much more. And also in the description, make sure you check out the links to uh, AE Scripts, Adobe Exchange, and Gumroad to check out some of the free and paid products I've created to help improve your workflows. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.